Ron gets all grown up. Here's your look at the new Star Ace Harry Potter Ron Weasley teenage version six scale collectible figure. Not only are we going to be checking out this new figure release, but we're also going to be checking out the deluxe version. The deluxe version will allow you to dress Ron Weasley out of his traditional wizard clothes into some more casual clothing instead. To get this review underway, the first thing we're going to do is figure out how tall, teenage version, Ron Weasley stands. And the Ultra Measure Tron, if I just stop it right there, the tape measure tells me that the figure stands 11.4 inches in height. Centimeters yells somebody from the back of the crowd, centimeters I will provide, about 30 centimeters tall. Exactly, you're looking at 29.1 centimeters in height. Long-standing collectors of the Harry Potter display stands will start seeing the familiar trend of the oval-shaped circular display bases. Here it casts in black, and you've got Harry Potter written across the top. There's no placard or anything indicating one character from another. But again, I always like the fact that they put Harry Potter along the top. I think initially the first round of Harry Potter figures, if memory serves me correctly, was a clear stand. I kind of like, though, the fact that they've gone now and switched to black instead. Same adjustable neck. This one now doesn't have the little crutch area in which the figure will stand atop of. Instead, this will fit around his waist. And much like most of the time you get these waist clips, they put these little rubber feet on the end. Just enough that it doesn't get snagged. Especially something on like a sweater surface. It doesn't get snagged and ultimately pulls and rips the fabric. So for display stands, there's nothing overly complicated, but it's still the tried and true stuff that you would expect to find from Star Ace. We're going to look at Ron's accessories first and foremost, and then we're going to kind of get into the figure, and then we're going to look at the deluxe version aspects of it, which are basically the interchangeable clothing. So coming included with Ron Weasley is Scabbers the Rat. Scabbers is a slightly portlier version of Scabbers that we've gotten before. It did come included with one before. This one is a little bit more sitting on its four legs and it has the tail on the end there. There's nothing really adjustable. In fact, there is nothing adjustable. I don't know why the camera's unfocusing there for a second, but there's nothing uh, adjustable or posable to Scabbers. It's just a plastic Staction figure. Staction basically means you can't do anything. You can't move anything to it. It's got some nice texturing, though, in its fur. I like also that they have the mouth slightly open. If I could pinpoint an emotion to go along scabbers here. I would say it's actually happy. It looks a little like a little happier scabbers. There's the underside of the figure. I say figure very loosely. I mean, it's just, like I said, it's more an accessory than it is anything else. 
uh, moving along as well. This is pretty cool. Whoops, pretty cool until I drop it. Don't worry, here it is right here. Uh, this is the Cruciatus uh, Curse Inset. It's nice that they would include such a thing. This is as closest as I would probably likely get to a creature that looked like this. It has no posability to it to speak of. Um, again, it's nice that they do include the Cruciatus Curse Insect. That was a tongue twister I have found to say. It's got some nice coloring to it. Airbrushing on the underbelly of the insect. Even the stripes have been applied there to the legs. Very nicely detailed. Small, yes. I mean, if you compare it to like Ron Weasley, it's smaller than his shoes. In fact, actually, <laughs> for me to throw out such a, there it is right there. There's the under section of Ron's shoes and there's the insect right there. So it's about, well, this way, it's about, you know, a third, one, two, three, you know, about three shoes. It's a third of the shoe smaller. It's unnecessarily, <laughs> an unnecessary scale, but just to kind of give you guys the idea. So he gets that as well. He, of course, comes included with his wand. And I love the fact that Staris puts as much paint as, uh, as they do into these pieces. Something as small, insignificant, if you can consider it to like the bigger picture of the figure. But you can see, again, they put some nice airbrushing into the, the actual wand. Gives it almost a striping effect that spirals its way down. Kind of almost got the same sort of uh, you know paint job to like a candy cane. Candy canes you don't normally eat, that would be this color, but it would kind of be like a brownish candy cane. Uh, even like the top or the handle portion, you can see has been very nicely, very intricately sculpted. Now, unfortunately, some sad news. For the figure's accessories, he doesn't really, he doesn't really come with much. Of course, he comes with the wand, he comes with the insect, he comes with Scavage the Rat. Uh, for his hands, the only other accessories that make up this figure, excluding his interchangeable clothing options, are a series of kind of spell casting hands and the hand for the holding the wand. And the wand just fits in between. There we go. The thumb sort of rests against the three fingers, two fingers, depending on how far up you put the wand and it sits on an angle. You could sit, have it straight up as well, but I think for displaying the figures, I often bring the wand forward, more on an angle in which it looks like they're clearly pointing it, as opposed to just straight out holding the wand. As you can see though, the hand does support it in both ways, out and of course up. And then like I said, you've got the spell casting hands. To, to replace out the hands, we'll go ahead and I'm just gonna grab this hand for the time being going to wiggle it off of its peg. The figure, by the way, doesn't come with any other swappable pegs. What you see is what you get. And then we'll take the replacement hand, just wiggle that back into place. There we go. Just when I sometimes think that I have it on completely, I twist the hand, the hand pops off. That would have been good timing for that to happen and that not necessarily be the case. I'm going to give you a sneak peek as to what the deluxe pieces come with, included with when you get the deluxe version of Ron. You get yourself a pair of casual boots laced up to the top and they've kind of worn the area edge there of the toe. Nice little clunky boots, I like those. They will peg into place, I'll show you those in a second. Again, all of this is sort of just leading up to the point. I'm going to look at the figure first and then we'll get Ron undressed and I'll show you all the other stuff. Uh, the t-shirt is a bright, very warm orange t-shirt. Uh, it does sit on a card. You have to take the card obviously out. Won't fit very well on Ron the way it currently is. So you just want to slide that out of the cardboard sleeve. Ron also comes with his traditional sweater. At one point I actually wanted to get a sweater like this. Having seen it, seen Ron wearing it, I thought, hey, that's a nice looking sweater. I would almost wear a sweater like that myself. Never did ever find that sweater. Uh, it does have the same sort of stitching. I don't know if you would say crocheting, but it still has these. It's basically like a, a larger one-to-one -one scale sweater scaled down. It's pretty incredible when you think that a piece like this, it not only is just a sweater, but if you really think about it, like the way it's been woven, it's woven in a scale that's appropriate to the figure. Because I mean, anyone could, of course, crochet or weave, I suppose, a sweater. 
but it would be one-to-one -one scale to whatever needles, whatever means you're using to create, create the sweater. This is a smaller scaled, exactly the same scale as Ron Weasley. I don't know why I feel the need to bring that up, but it's pretty clever again when you think about it, because if you were to sew this yourself, if you had the necessary skills, um, your sweater would be much, you know, much bigger of a seam or much bigger weaves to it than what you would eventually get, you know, what you would get here. And then last, but certainly not least, he also comes with a pair of gray trousers. The trousers have pockets onto the back. They also have, even have loopholes uh, for his belt as well. Uh, the figure itself, if you lift up his sweater, he doesn't have a belt. So even though he does have the looplets for it, it's nice that they would put it in it. He doesn't actually come with a belt though. I guess if you had a one-to-one -one scale or one-sixth scale, a belt, you could take that belt and put it with the supply pants that come included with Ron Weasley here. So let's get a better gander at this teenage version, Ron Weasley. Like I said, all the other alternate clothing is solely for the deluxe version. So if you don't ever plan on displaying your Ron Weasley with all the casual clothing, you could simply pick up the standard release and you would get you would get Ron, you would get the wand, the two interchangeable hands, the insect, and Scabbers the rat. Uh, looking at his face, and then we'll kind of work our way down. It's not a bad face, actually. Something does feel slightly off on the figure, and I'm wondering if it's right here on the sides of his cheeks. If you kind of go like this, I feel like Ron's face is sculpted, and it does look like him, but I feel like the, the shape of his head seems slightly off. I mean, I think that might be what's throwing off the shape of his overall head. Like the hair looks good, the eyes, the nose, the mouth, and the ears, but I think it's the shape on the sides that perhaps could be throwing off this looking more like Ron Weasley. I think maybe, again, it just needs to be a little bit more narrow, because I mean, like looking at images, it's clearly a case where it looks like he's got a little bit more of a, not a narrower face, but a little bit more of a sunken in face. If not for that, I think it's actually a really good head sculpt. Like I said, the hair is done very, very well. Never had any problems when it comes to Star Ace releases. The hair has meticulously been sculpted. Much longer hair than maybe some of the other figures that we've looked at here. The coloring is almost a pairing of a caramel brown, and then you've got some darker browns in there as well. Ron is a fair, scale, uh, fair, fair uh, toned character. Uh, he is a little bit lighter, a little bit paler, as you can clearly see. But they've done a great job of airbrushing like the little side areas here. Areas around his cheek, areas around his eyes. A little bit more grayish around the areas of his eyes. And a little bit more red like areas around his mouth. Again, the sides of his cheeks and whatnot. Yeah, I'm overall pretty happy with the head sculpt. But I don't feel it's 100% there. Possibly, again, m maybe some of it is just because of the shape on the cheeks. He does seem fuller. Fuller is probably my takeaway from this. He seems a little fuller than what I think a teenage Ron Weasley should actually look like. Of course, for his outfit, he gets himself the Gryffindor uh, wizard's robe. As you can see, there's the patch there on the side. It does have a button. Um, it doesn't actually, it, it's not really a workable button from the sense it snaps, but there is a loop here on the side that in theory you could rope around and it is a very tight fit, but you could fit that around the button, around the little button snap there on the side if you wanted to. Uh, we have certainly seen the teenage... Well, we have already looked at Hermione, and we've also looked at uh, Harry Potter, all in the teenage versions. Each of them also came with their corresponding uh, casual clothing, or again, the Gryffindor wizard's robe. And then underneath that, of course, is your Gryffindor sweater. Regular white shirt and the Gryffindor colored tie, that in the cranberry, almost burgundy color, and then you've got the striping there in the orange. Uh, love the, I've always loved this color. If I could pull this color off myself, I certainly would. Uh, one other thing as well, and I believe all the wizard robes have been the exact same, is that, we just put the figure down here for a second, you can take the corresponding the, uh, the wand here, and then the wand just slips right into the side pocket. So you can, can you can keep that concealed, put that away if you certainly don't want the figure to be displayed with it, and again, you've got that pocket available for you to retrieve the wand. As we move further down the figure, I mean, again, there is the all the way the shirt 
pants and everything are going to come together. We're going to have to unfortunately undress all of him, which I, I was, I really don't like taking ties and stuff off. I was worried because there's elastic underneath all that. Well, I'll, we'll talk about that when we get this, when we get to that point. Once again, black slacks. And uh, he also has uh, black shoes, which a little bit of scuffing, a little bit of slight off coloring that they've added in there, kind of like a brown, a little bit of a gray added in there as well. And then there's the under soles of the shoes, which as you can see, have a little bit of dirt and uh, wear and tear to them. So overall, again, pretty much what we've seen before with Hermione and pretty much what we of course seen with the teenage version of Harry Potter here presented as Ron Weasley. And of course, much like those other figures, we're going to get him undressed and put him into his casual clothing. So why don't we first start with taking off his shoes. By the way, one thing I forgot to mention is when you lift up his pants, he does actually have socks underneath. So we're going to go ahead and just wiggle the boots off, the shoes off. They're attached via a peg. This is not something that I generally like doing on camera. I usually like just doing this off camera. But there's the peg right there. And then while you're actually really at it, you could take the socks off also if you wanted to, or you could leave the socks on. It's entirely up to you. Again, we're just going to grab, just sort of grabbing the ankle area, grabbing these digits here and just reaching on to the boot and to the shoe and just kind of wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. What you really want to do, do this nice and slow. Uh, you don't want to pull this off too, too aggressively because what will end up happening is you may um, unroot the ball joint here in from the socket of the shoe. You really want to take this peg off with the shoe because the ones that you're going to be replacing them with are also going to have their own corresponding pegs. While you're also at it, why not just take the hands off as well because you're going to want to take those off. You want to be able to slide everything off of his arms and his hands, of course, will be getting in the way of all that. So we can start by taking the robe off. You just want to bring the arms back a little bit so that you can just drape them off. I always feel like I'm dressing and undressing a small child uh, when it comes to uh, these six scale figure releases. Um, basically everything is, like I said, a one to one scale, just a little bit smaller. Pants uh, trade off, for example, snaps and zippers in favor of uh, you know, the uh, Velcro here, which I think is a much easier means. Once again, you're just going to detach this, make sure it's fully loosened up, and then you're just going to slide the pants off of Ron Weasley. There you go. And then we're going to go ahead, you could probably even take the head off as well. All these things that we're dismantling Ron with. Uh, this would just be a lot easier to take the sweater off. You're going to slide this off, off of his arms. And actually, even what you could do too is just bring the arms up. Bring the arms up, and then you can just bring the sweater over the shoulders, over the neck, and slide them off the arms. Just like, just like that. You can see how involved this gets to, uh, starting where we were starting from, eventually getting to a fully undressed Ron body, and then we can get him dressed up again. As we look at the headless stump, one thing I always do worry about again is the is the tie. The tie is attached. I just lifted the collar of the shirt. The tie is attached via a clear plastic elastic. So we're just going to slide that off. Then we're going to go and just undo the shirt. The shirt is also on Velcro. Kind of gives you a good opportunity, or at least it gives me an opportunity to show you guys how the workings of these figures look like when you get everything off. If you, again, only picked up the standard release of Ron Weasley, you wouldn't have to do any of this. All of this stuff would be left on because after all, he would keep his wizard's robe on. Um, you can also just bend the elbows. Sometimes that is a little easier because there's a lot less uh, length of arm that you have to pull the sleeves through. And again, we just, I think it's just a cot around the elbow area. There we go. And again, you just keep, keep very carefully, keep very carefully pulling off the arm. Again, you want to just bend the elbow. That might be a big help as well. Once you can kind of get it over the first one, you can bring that arm up as well, just to kind of relax it a little bit. Just keep pulling it off. You might even just, there we go. Just pull it off on both of them. And there you go. What you have is Ron Weasley. A little worse for wear, I would have to admit, but that's basically what the body looks like. 
before you start putting the clothing and stuff on him. And uh, <laughs> where is Ron's head? Where did I put Ron's head? Ron's head is right there. There we go. You just put Ron's head back on. And ladies and gentlemen, there you have Ron Weasley. Okay, that's being a little silly. So we're going to go ahead and take the t-shirt off of the cardboard backing. Seldom do I ever be able to get these off without creasing the side arm areas of the cardboard, but you may not ever really go put them back on as they are anyways. We're going to go ahead and take the head back off. Sorry, Ron. Sorry. Sorry, Ron. And we're going to bring the arms up. We are going to take the t-shirt and we are going to slide that through. Take the other arm, sort of just bend it inward. And we're also going to slide that into the under area of the t-shirt. Once that's in place, drape this over. I think collectively, of all the six scale figures that I've reviewed, the Star Ace ones, usually nine times out of ten, are the ones that I'm having to undress. Just because they, to their credit, of course, they give you alternate clothing. And I would certainly be doing a disservice reviewing these guys if I didn't show you what the alternate clothing looked like. I would say probably the most involved most involved six scale figure that I had to undress and redress again was probably probably the Vincent Vega uh, from the Pulp Fiction line which was also from Star Ace. There we go. Him and of course his colleague Jules Winfield. But there you have the white or the uh, orange t-shirt on the body. Let's go ahead and add the pants. I've already taken the liberty of putting the pants on. It pretty much would be the exact thing, same thing as what you would think putting pants on would be. But I am going to just bring the cuffs up just a little bit. I have also decided not to put the socks on just for the time being because likely I'm going to be displaying Ron Weasley uh, with the wizard's robe on. That's, that's my preferred design for him, the preferred look. So I've left the socks off just because I know when this review is finished, I'm probably going to revert him back. I might even just revert him back at the very end of this review. Um, but we're going to put the feet in place. You may want to, again, follow the same route of pegging. This is just attached a little bit here. There we go. You just wiggle these back into the little hole areas. And then once those are in place, we can go ahead and add Ron's sweater. So off camera, I basically finished off the rest of Ron's dressing up. I didn't figure you guys needed to see all of that. But when we have it all finished, this is what we have. Uh, again, you've got the orange t-shirt underneath, a v-neck sweater comprised of like a burgundy and almost a lighter cream color. A pair of gray slacks, slightly wrinkled, unfortunately, just by the way it came out of the, uh, the actual packaging. A little on the wrinkly side. And a pair of boots, a pair of, I guess, high top shoes, which are laced up as well. Again, really nice paint job on the shoes. Uh, there's the undertreads on them. The, uh, the pants, though they don't have a belt, do have the loops provided if you wanted to, I suppose, put a belt in there. Back pockets, functional back pockets, not that there's really much that you can do with those. Uh, and then again, like a really nice knit sweater. Generally, though, I'm trying to even think of it now, like my teenage version, Harry Potter, is in his casual outfit. Hermione is also in her casual outfit. So likelihood, I probably will end up keeping Ron also in his casual outfit. Because we have the younger characters, the younger versions of both Harry, well, Harry, Hermione, and Ron, respectively, in their uh, wizard's suits. Usually then the teenage versions, I will keep them probably in their casual outfit. So probably for Ron, same idea as well. Um, it's a nice contrast so that if you have them all on display, you're simply not just going to have every single one of them dressed up in the exact same wizard's outfit. Some smaller, of course, for their younger child selves, but still, it's nice to break it up a little bit and to be able to put them in their casual outfits instead. Okay, so let's have a look at Ron Weasley's articulation. His head rotates all the way around. One of the benefits, actually, that I undressed him on camera was the fact that you guys were able to kind of see how the bodies come together. Very intricate, fully posable bodies Star Ace uses for their figures. So the head rotates all the way around. 
Uh, there is also a secondary hinge right there. You probably can see it only by me tipping down the t-shirt, but there's a secondary ball joint in the base of the neck. So you have one at the top, one at the bottom, and you can get a full range of motion that way. He has an upper torso crunch ball joint. Uh, his arms hinge out, not restricted at all by his sweater. Slightly forward, well, slightly forward, quite a bit forward, quite a bit back on his arms. Swivel on the bicep. He's got a double hinge on the elbow. A little on the squeaky side, unfortunately, but still nonetheless, it bent double hinges on the elbow. Hands rotate all the way around. Hinges back and forth as well, depending on whatever hand you decide to go with on this guy. Um, you might find yourself kind of correcting the shoulders periodically because it does, he's very, there's additional padding that they've put into the shoulder area. If you're not pushing it down, I myself find that the shoulder pads, the padding in the shoulders at times make him look a little too shouldery. So just kind of smooth that down a little bit as best I can. Uh, as for the legs, the legs split out uh, forward back ratcheted on both of those a swivel on the top cut of the thigh he has a double hinge on the knee uh, again very creaky and squeaky but that's okay and his feet also rotate all the way around uh, there is technically also a hinge back and forth on the feet but the, the shoes don't really give you much clearance for how you want to move the feet back and forth and there you have ron weasley a decent release Certainly, it fills out the trio, having already looked at the teenage version of Hermione and the teenage version of Harry Potter. Ron Weasley is, of course, the logical next addition. Next addition, try not to drop him. Next addition to your set. Uh, again, getting the deluxe version, which allows you to have the casual clothing on these figures, I think is nice because it's different. They don't all look like they're wearing wizard's outfits. And as much as I love the Harry Potter characters wearing wizard's outfits. It's nice from time to time to be also able to switch that out, change them up a little bit, and put them in their casual outfits instead. The Harry Potter Ron Weasley teenage version from Star Ace I like, but I don't know if I love it. The Harry Potter and the Hermione both teenage versions were exquisite sculpts. I know debated by many collectors that the Hermione didn't quite look a lot like her, but I, I thought it did. Ron Weasley, I think by the contrast I'm comparing him to the other two, I think comes up a little bit short. Don't get me wrong, I think it's a nice outing once again from Stars, and I'm glad that we finally complete the trio in all their teenage versions. But there's something about Ron's face that I feel like misses it a little bit. Even in fact, now that you can see it compared to the box next to it on the left, the artwork on the box sort of portrays Ron with a little bit more of a narrow face. It kind of points off to the bottom of his chin. Instead, though, the figure that what we get here on the side, I feel like is a little fuller. His face looks a little, a little more full is basically the best way I can describe it. So I, while I do like it, I think I like the Harry Potter and the Hermione teenage version just a little bit more. This, of course, completes the trio, which really would feel absent without the presence of having Ron included in it. And like the other two, I probably will end up displaying Ron Weasley in his uh, casual outfit, which you can only pick up in the deluxe version. The deluxe version gives you the benefit of just mixing it up a bit. As great as everybody loves the idea of having these characters in their wizard's outfit, if you already have the kid versions of all three of the characters, by also having the teenage versions all also sporting their wizard's robe, I think there's just a little too much wizard robe maybe in your display cabinet. That mixing it up a little bit with the casual outfit is really the best way to go if you have the teenage version of Harry, teenage version of Hermione, and teenage version of Ron. Just my own personal opinion. Um, I would recommend, if anything, getting the deluxe version. So at the very least, if you decide one day, hey, I want to dress up Ron Weasley in his sweater, his pants, and his shoes, probably don't want to maybe say that aloud, you have the option. You can do that by picking up the deluxe version. Speaking of picking up the deluxe version, some good news is the Harry Potter Ron Weasley teenage version, one six scale collectible figure, that's a mouthful, is currently available now. You should be able to pick him up right away and add him to your existing extensive collection of Star Ace Harry Potter six scale figures. Today we were having a look at the Star Ace Harry Potter Ron Weasley. This was the teenage version. This was also the deluxe version that came with everything you're seeing here in the final looks. Of course, there's other stuff there as well. 
but here in Final Looks, we're looking at him in his casual outfit. I want to go back and have a look at some of my other Star Ace Harry Potter reviews. I pretty much covered every single figure that Star Ace has released, so if you guys want to check out those reviews, there's a playlist. Yes, that, that is right. There is a playlist just for that. Stay tuned, guys, because we're going to have a look at some other Star Ace releases coming onto this channel, so stay tuned for those. Make sure, as well, you hit that little subscribe button down below, my bunkos, because that will guarantee you that when new videos are coming onto this channel, for the most part, you'll know when they are coming up. You can also swing on over to the homepage if you'd like. Stop by for a visit. Come on in. We can have some lemonade. If you he head on over to the, the, uh, the homepage, you can also check out all the videos I've posted up to this point. You can sure, of course, hit the bell notification. That will work, but the 100% money back guarantee is if you head over to the main page, you can check out every single video that I've done in the video section, and you can sort of go through your checklist. I've watched that one. Oh, that's new. I haven't watched that one, and so on and so forth. More videos, guys, will be coming your way, so as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.